Welcome back to Computers for the Completely Clueless. I'm Lee Keller. And I'm Kim Cavanaugh. And we're not as clueless as we used to be. No, we're taking control, Lee. We're That's taking it. control. We're taking control. We're working on the control panel in Windows XP today, looking at the different options you can uh, use to take control of your computer and have a better computing yeah. experience. And this next one's a big one. Right. I use this, this a lot. This is probably the, the, one of the biggest reasons to visit the control panel, more yeah. than any other. And it, 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 we listed three things that you're able to do here. You're either able to add programs, remove programs, and then thirdly, you're able to add components from win or, yeah. or remove them from Windows. So really critical that uh, if you want to have an optimal performance and um, uh, experience with a computer, you want, to, you want to bring this up. Now, okay? I want you to notice how quickly that came up. Yes. My experience isn't like that at home. <laughs> because you have a lot of programs. Right. The more programs you have installed, right. the longer that's This is almost a brand new computer. At least it's been re-imaged to be a brand new computer. And it's got some additional software and other things installed on it. But there's a lot of things that the normal home computer would not have. Now, each one of these items, and they're listed alphabetically, is a different program that's installed in your computer. Now, some of these don't show up in the start menu, right? I mean, right. some of these are, are programs they're, they're that operate in the background or they work with a different program. So if we wanted to remove Shockwave, right. I would just click on it. Right. I would choose Remove. And the little wizard comes up. And it asks if I want to automatically remove everything associated with it. Right. If I want to do some custom uninstalling, or if I'm actually just repairing the system, which is almost like reinstalling right. it. Right, and can be, that can be handy sometimes if you have mm -hmm. a program that's not acting right, it's acting a little weird, or you know, uh, you're, you're just yeah. not pleased with it. Sometimes you can go in there and just repair yeah, it. Yeah, I also recommend that you run a virus scan if you see something that's not right. running quite right. Right, now sometimes when you have something that needs to be repaired though, you're going to have to have the original disk. Mm -hmm. And it'll toss that up, mm -hmm. and you'll be looking for that disk, and if you don't have it, you're done there. Right. Well, let's cancel out of this one because we do want to keep Shockwave in there. Um, now, one of the things that you can do is you can also add new programs. I mean, mm -hmm. removing programs is really quite easy. You just select it from the list, click Change or Remove, tell it to automatically. There's not many times when you're going to want to do a custom. You just do the, you do the default rapid install and yeah. away she goes. Now, one of the things you do sometimes is you're uninstalling programs to recover space that you need. Right. So you can sort these by size. Right. So I can see that open office is my, my big eater there. Right. If and I wanted to save space. And I'm not using that program anymore, I could just remove it. That's the key. And if you're in doubt as to whether or not you're using that program. That's another good drop down there. Don't. Well, you yeah, know. Check it out. They're uh, under frequency of use. Uh, you know, I never believe this one. Yeah, you don't. <laughs> because well, that's really, because it says some things rarely that are not rarely. Yeah, I've yeah. seen it say rarely, and I know I used the program yesterday and the day before and okay. the day before. All right, so be careful with that one. All yeah. right, Lee. Just make sure it's a program that you're not using. You need to be familiar with what you're running around your program with. Right. When in doubt, leave it alone. Right, and I think there's also a thing on there that says last, date last used. So, again, if there are software products on there that you haven't used for a, a year and a half mm -hmm. and you want to free up space on your computer, you just sort it by that, look down at the bottom of the list, say, oh, shoot, I haven't used this thing forever. Mm -hmm. Dump it out of there. Okay. And, again, why would you do this instead of just deleting it from the start menu uh, or browsing to yeah. it and deleting? Or what's the difference? Well, there's two problems there. When you delete from the start menu, very often all you're deleting is a shortcut to the program. Really? So you haven't really saved anything. Even You've just taken away 1K. 1K, yeah, <laughs> if that. tiny little bit of data that creates the shortcut. And then there's the other thing. You'll get somebody that goes down into the system, explores it, finds files, and deletes them. Right. Well, that leaves remnants in the registry. That's the biggest problem. That's especially a major problem. So again, yeah. this is oh, this is a Windows thing because on Macintosh yeah. it's an entirely different experience. So always use this because it will flush out everything that's associated yeah. with that program, even files that are hidden deep, deep within the Windows operating yeah, if system. If the program's written right. Right, and and you know, uh, hopefully that's the only kind of program you're using. Watch out for some of that free stuff right. we've been telling you about. Right. Now we've got up here, and we had on our list add new programs. Do you mm -hmm. use that button, Lee? I actually never use the add programs because most programs today, if you install them off of a CD, mm -hmm. or even if you download it, you execute the program and it does the installation. Pretty much that's yeah. Pretty much that's my experience as well. But if you want to go through a wizard type environment, you can come here. You can browse to um, files that you've downloaded, executable files, or if you have your CD or f ooh, floppy. Floppy. Wow. That's People old. Still use those. No. You can just stick your CD in. But you know the CDs are written in such a way that really you just put it in the machine 
It's going to be detected. The installer okay. program is going to come up automatically, and it'll do the same thing as this would. Now, do. I've heard there's a movement in uh, Windows. In fact, Vista, I think, will not auto run CDs many times. Really? There's a, a trend to go away from that so that you avoid possible virus infections. Macintosh has already moved away from it, mm -hmm. and I've heard that Windows is right, either so there then, or not far behind. Right, so then in that case, if you're having problems, you put the CD in, it doesn't bring up the installer, then you can go into this window and, mm -hmm. and it will run through the installer for you. Now this All is right, the part here's we the one we about. like a lot. Sometimes you have to have the CD to do this. Right. So th this is an important one. But let's talk about it a little bit. We, we clicked on a button that says Add Windows Components. When you install Windows on your computer, uh, it installs with a, a default set of software right. products and services and so forth. The thing that, you know, that, uh, that Microsoft believes that most people commonly use. And that's fine. These are, I mean, they're correct. But what if you want to add something that's not there? And if yeah. we scroll up, you'll see that there's a, a list of items, some of which are checked and some of which are not. Yeah, and some of these, if you, you can actually go into details on it, right. and you'll see that that's broken down into other levels. For oh, example, if really? I go to games. Really? Are you going to tell the story? And uh, Yeah, the story <laughs> about the guy that went down here decided that he could recover this 0.1 megabyte uh -huh. by removing solitaire. Right. Is he still married? Uh, I, <laughs> yes, but he's, he walks with a limp because his wife liked like solitaire. Yeah. Right. So, you know, before you go taking these things out and to put them back, as, like you said, sometimes you might have to have the, 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 yeah. the actual disk that Taking came it with off the is computer. Easy. Right. So if you want to remove some of these, get rid of them, you're, you can save some space. Uh, internet games, I have no Look idea how what big that, that is. is too. I That's know, 8.5 megs, yeah, go so, away. So we're, we're going to get rid of that. Right. We come back here, and you can also look at accessories right. and see what's in there. I don't really like the interface that way because it doesn't really give you a clear indication that there are subcomponents within those categories. Would have been better with the plus that yeah, we're accustomed but, to. But again, the details button does the same thing. By the way, there are different sets of mouse pointers, so you can make that a little fancy. Well, okay. But, and again, done. you want to be careful here by removing, you don't want to remove Windows components that you might actually, you know, might actually want in the future. So yeah. Now, we've adjusted that a little bit, and it doesn't show the adjustment here yet. Right, right. And then we can go down through here, and if there are other things that we wanted to look at. Right. For example, if you were using Outlook for your, what, your mail, right. you might want to get rid of Outlook Express, and Absolutely. that's a big program. Yep. So you can go down through okay, that. Okay, Windows Messenger, done. same kind of thing. You're mm -hmm. not doing any chatting, and you want to recover the space that's been allocated. Now, let's go back to ads, though, Lee, because there was a couple of them on there that people might have an interest in adding. Uh, where we go? Let's see. I think, oh, internet, okay, there's a web server. If you happen to be doing some web development, okay. that's, that's the biggie for, for me anyway. Yeah. But, again, there are some ones in there like MSN Explorer. You may never want that, so get yeah, rid of it. You know, save the 30 uh, megs and Firefox. use it on something that you want. So let's go well, here. not Internet Explorer, MSN Explorer. Mm -hmm. MSN Explorer, that's right. right. That so now it's actually going to go ahead and it's going to delete that, uh, that, uh, those Internet games that we said we don't want anymore. And they're gone. And they're gone. If you go to the Start menu, you'll see that they're gone. And when we no, come you back won't from, see that they're gone. <laughs> yeah, you'll see that they're not there. <laughs> All right, we're going to come back and we'll talk about some additional options or the some letter A. Appearance. And appearance, absolutely. Cool, so okay. stay with us.